New Testament Christology. This lecture is an introduction to the subject of New Testament Christology. So let me say something about Richard Baucom's uh, work. Uh, Jesus and the God of Israel it contains the first chapter, as its first chapter, an earlier book published 10 years earlier by Baucom called God Crucified. Monotheism and Christology in the New Testament. And so Bauckham is expanding his argument um, in the book Jesus and the, and the God of Israel. Bauckham uh, says a number of things. First of all, he explores what it means to claim monotheism within Judaism. What is Old Testament and Jewish monotheism? And he notes that uh, there are different views on this. The first view is what we might call strict monotheism, that no divinity attributed to another other than the one God is possible. Uh, this camp sees any attribution of divinity to Jesus to be a radical break from Jewish monotheism. A second view is uh, a denial of strict monotheism uh, that is claimed to be something that can be seen in Second Temple Judaism. That's the time from uh, the late um, 500s when Israel returns and begins to build the temple in the, in the 400s as well. Um, and uh, all the way up to its destruction in AD 70. And it's claimed that in this period, there is a breakdown of the strict Jewish monotheism that might have proceeded for some time. And the suggestion is that this is due to the role of subordinate divine or semi-divine intermediate beings, such as angels and exalted humans, or the possible uh, personified attributes or functions uh, that God has, such as uh, the function wisdom. God's wisdom is spoken of as if it has its own personal identity. And so on this view, which Bauckham rejects, uh, we have the movement toward uh, semi-divine beings in Judaism. Now, this is something that has been suggested by a number of scholars, um, not just radical scholars, but some closer to evangelicalism. And so what I've presented here are a, a list of uh, such authors. And this is what Bauckham is up against in his argument. Bauckham argues that intermediaries do not share in, di in divinity. And I'm just going to mention the points here. God is the only eternal one, uh, some texts claim. God alone created the world. Thirdly, intermediaries do not share in God's rule, but rather they serve God. Fourth, we need to say something about the worship of God, as we have already in this lecture. And here's a quote from Baucom on page 15. Uh, the typical Hellenistic view was that worship is a matter of degree because divinity is a matter of degree. Jews understood their practice of, practice of monolatry, worship of one God, to be justified, indeed required, because the unique identity of Yahweh was so understood as to place him not merely at the summit of a hierarchy of div divine beings, of divinity, but in an absolute unique category beyond comparison with anything else. Worship was the recognition of this unique incomparability of the one God. It was the response to Yahweh's self-revelation as the sole creator and ruler of all. And then what Bauckham does is he explores some possible exceptions to that. He sees three possible exceptions, but he doesn't believe that this uh, 
leads to semi-divine beings, but rather that that can be explained in other ways. And this is uh, some uh, a passage in, in a, a Jewish work called Joseph and Asenath um, to the language of spirit of truth or prince of light in Qumran's uh, community document and in the writings of Philo about the Logos of, of God. And he doesn't think that any of these move to the level of some being that is uh, that that shares divine identity. Then Bauckham spends some time looking at the intermediary figures, um, and uh, this would be word and wisdom of God take part in creation according to a number of psalms and old testament books and jewish literature in the intertestamental period uh, and he says these are uh, characteristics or functions intrinsic to god's own identity identity not some other personality also involved in creation and he says that wisdom is depicted as sitting on god's throne like an advisor advising a king and if one were to argue that there is some form of distinct existence for wisdom uh, this does not mean within judaism monotheism that there is uh, within jewish monotheism that there is a subordinate divine being apart from god called wisdom such a figure must be understood within judaism uh, within jewish monotheism he says it means that these Jewish writers envisage some form of real distinction within the unique identity of the one God, not multiple gods or God and semi-divine beings. So it means that these Jewish writers envisage some form of real distinction within the unique identity of the one God, within Jewish monotheism. And some of Bauckham's conclusions, he says, Second Temple Judaism maintained a strict monotheism. They drew the line of distinction between the one God and all other reality clearly, and were in the habit of distinguishing God from all other reality by means of certain clearly articulated criteria. That is what was expected that God would do and no other creature. Yet it was possible for early Christianity to identify Jesus as divine within a strict Jewish monotheism. For Jesus was seen as included within the identity of this one God. The semi-divine intermediaries argument that we've noted does not support an orthodox Christology, it really is more like an Arian demigod. And Arian taught that Jesus was created before the rest of creation, but he was created. And uh, suggesting that we have these semi-divine intermediaries in Second Temple Judaism is moving right in the direction of this kind of Arian view. And for some scholars, to suggest that this is a helpful uh, context, a helpful idea developed in Second Temple Judaism that can help explain uh, what was said about Jesus is really moving in the direction of Arianism rather than Orthodox Christology. Uh, he says that there are problems with the discussion of dating of these texts, some of these texts. He, he talks about a clear understanding of Jewish understanding of divinity uh, being lacking in these arguments and he says that much of the intermediaries argument focuses on marginal material and questionable interpretations without looking at the clearer and larger evidence in Second Temple Judaism about the nature of divinity and the clear belief in a strict monotheism. Now Bauckham's thesis is this, the New Testament writers intentionally identify Jesus within the divine identity of Jewish monotheism by, quote, 
using precisely those characteristics of the divine identity on which Jewish monotheism focused in characterizing God as unique. They include Jesus in the unique divine sovereignty over all things. They include him in the unique divine creation of all things. They identify him by the divine name, which names the unique divine identity, and they portray him as accorded the worship which, for Jewish monotheists, is recognition of the unique divine identity. You don't worship anyone else. In this way, they develop a kind of Christological monotheism, which is fully continuous with early Jewish monotheism, but distinctive in the way it sees Jesus Christ himself as intrinsic to the identity of the unique God. Uh, just to add to that for clarity, what we don't see in the early church is a claim that there is another God alongside of God, and that would be Jesus. Uh, what we rather find is that what is said of God is said of Jesus. And so Jesus is uh, therefore included in the unique monotheism, strict monotheism, and divine identity uh, of Judaism. Balkum says, I shall be arguing what will seem to anyone familiar with the study of New Testament Christology a surprising thesis, that the highest possible Christology, the inclusion of Jesus in the unique divine identity, was central to the faith of the early church, even before any of the New Testament writings were written, since it occurs in all of them. Although there was development in understanding this inclusion of Jesus in the divine identity of God, the decisive step of so including him was made at the very beginning of Christology. And later on the same page, he says that Jewish monotheism and high Christology were in some way in tension is one of the prevalent illusions in this field of New Testament Christology that we must allow the texts to dispel. And therein lies a challenge for your reading of Bauckham to see uh, his handling of those texts in support of the thesis that we've just gone over.